Hello, everybody. I'm Susan Wagner, president of Equine Advocates. And as most of you know, um, we've had this organization in existence for over 27 years. And we have a sanctuary here in Chatham, New York, for horses, ponies, donkeys, and mules, which includes four Mustangs. And um, our goal is to end horse slaughter. That was my original intent for founding Equine Advocates back in 1996. So we find ourselves, after all these years, with a bill that was introduced as an amendment to the current uh, farm bill that is expected to pass this fall called the SAFE Act. And in our view, the SAFE Act is anything but safe and doesn't resemble the old SAFE Acts that have been around for more than a decade. Uh, basically, the SAFE Act is based on a bill that is supposed to be the way to end horse slaughter, but unfortunately was changed. And what I mean by that is Kathleen Doyle, who is probably one of the foremost experts in the passage of humane equine legislation in America, who passed the horse tripping bill and Prop 6, the, the bill to the, the state initiative to end horse slaughter in California back in 1998, presented the non-legislative sponsors of the SAFE Act with an amended bill that passed in 2018 called the Dog, Cat, Meat, Trade Prohibition Act of 2018, which bans the slaughter of dogs and cats for food. And she thought to herself, what a perfect vehicle to end horse slaughter because dogs, cats, and horses are culturally special in our in our society and 83 percent of Americans oppose horse slaughter. So she thought this is amazing. So she presented it to the sponsors and they did nothing with it for a couple of years and then all of a sudden announced that they were going to use that bill, renaming it the SAFE Act that has no resemblance to the old SAFE Acts and took out two very important components that she had put into that bill in order to totally end horse slaughter, which is to prohibit the slaughter of horses, not just for human consumption, but also for animal consumption. And she included a clause about intrastate commerce, which is also very urgent when you're trying to pass a bill to totally end horse slaughter. So this bill was kind of secretly introduced around the time that New York State was making history with its own bill. And it's the best bill ever to end horse slaughter passed by a state and still has to be signed by the governor. But when she signs it, New York State will have prohibited the slaughter of horses for human and animal consumption. So any federal bill needs to mirror that bill. So we are calling for and have been calling for amending the SAFE Act during the markups, and that includes the members of the agricultural committees in both the House and Senate. Those are the people we have to get to in asking them to please amend the SAFE Act. We're not looking to kill that bill. We're looking to amend it because what we desperately need is a good horse slaughter bill. But the SAFE Act, as currently drafted, does not do that and, in fact, will make things much worse. I'm standing here with Anna Twinney, who is a wild horse expert. She is a world-renowned horsewoman, but has literally worked with thousands of Mustangs. And this one standing next to us is Oniki. Many of you know her story. She was rounded up in Utah with 300 horses uh, by the Bureau of Land Management, ended up in a home where they couldn't keep her, and she landed here. And we needed professional help. And Carol Walker, whose wonderful podcast I had the honor of being on the other day. Carol, by the way, is also one of the foremost experts and advocates for wild horses in America. Um, she, she has she had recommended Anna as someone who would probably be the best person to work with Oniki and the mm. planets were aligned and Anna came here. So I hope I've given you some background. I don't mean to ramble on, but the thing is, I cannot understand. I, look, the SAFE Act is going to affect all horses, domestic, feral, and wild. But for the life of me, I cannot understand why any legitimate wild horse group could possibly support the SAFE Act as currently drafted. One of the worst things that we fear about the SAFE Act is that there was a trade-off or deal made uh, in return for taking out animal consumption from Kathleen's language that she had uh, submitted. And we believe that they had made a deal 
uh, the non-legislative sponsors, with the tribes, and with some of the zoo organizations, including possibly the Association of Zoos and Sanctuaries, because then you have all these feral horses on the on the tribal lands that they want to get rid of. And according to a resolution that was that was put out, issued by the largest uh, Native American group 13 years ago, uh, it's very clear, and they're standing by this resolution to slaughter horses, as well as a letter from George Menenik from the Native Tribal right. Horse Coalition, and he has the same sentiments. So you've got these horses that they want to get rid of, and then you have the customer. Uh, but the thing is, dogs, cats, and horses are eaten in other countries. They are not eaten in the United States. We need to protect our dogs, yeah. cats, and horses. And that's why the dog-cat bill, uh, that was the Buchanan bill, was such a perfect vehicle. But I understand, and, and I would like you to talk about yeah. this, because there are so many things that are being hidden and that the average person never hears about because it's happening on the reservations. Can you please talk about the experience that you had in Wyoming uh, about a month ago? Absolutely. I was in Wyoming surrounded by 100,000 acres and have been going there for approximately 20 years. Okay. Exceedingly surprised to hear for the first time ever about the roundups on the neighboring land. Over 2,000 horses were rounded up and it's my understanding that that was both tribal land as well as game and fish. It had not met the press. Nobody had heard about it and it's quite horrifying to think that we bringing in archaic means to manage these horses in such an idyllic landscape where it's lush, it truly is green, there's tons of water, there's tons of space. The horses had been rounded up and the ranchers were talking about it and they'd gone over to Mexico was the word on the street. They had gone to Mexico in order to bypass things here in the United States and go for human consumption absolutely horrifying for me to think number one we have enough space for them two we have the means to manage them three we have solutions of pzp and better breeding plans we are a first world country and these horses we see in very different ways than any any other person does the horses brought us across the united states they changed the lives of the settlers they moved into farming and continue to be in farming. They've helped in performance and recreation and most recently are huge in equine facilitated learning and coaching. These horses are not seen as livestock and if mankind and our citizens were educated correctly on the true facts of the matter, they would not be signing this bill and approving it if they knew what was going to be happening. I believe that not only are these roundups either done undercover and not publicly available and some of them are done illegally as well, but I also believe that if this word got out on the street, nobody would support it as it stands today. You know, um, there's a report here that was issued by two environmental researchers, and it says, Bureau of Land Management again releases fraudulent population statistics for wild horses and burrows without using science or evidence, and the U.S. Office of the Inspector General refuses to investigate. What did You looked at this report. I, what did you think of it? Well, I, I, I think you'd be bleeping out all of my words if you truly had <laughs> my thing. I think it was shocking. I'm looking at these. The... I'm going to tell you as it is. I'm looking at the f stats going, this isn't f possible. That's what I said. And I'm looking at them because it said a 300 increase in population. That cannot happen. My mind went everywhere to say this is going to educated individuals and everybody knows that the gestation period of a horse is basically 11 months. So therefore the stats shown from one increase to another of that year of population is physically impossible. Physically impossible. Horses are not dogs. They do not breed that many foals like puppies and not in that time. So therefore Therefore, the stats cannot be correct. I'm not sure who this is being presented to, but anybody that has an ounce of investigative 
patterns would look into why are these numbers being fudged. Thank you, Anna. And finally, <laughs> I hope that between you and Carol Walker and other experts coming on yeah. board, that we could get together and get to the members of the agriculture committees in both the House and Senate when, before this uh, SAFE Act is marked up so that we can actually get it amended and have a great bill instead of a bill that's going to reinstate domestic slaughter in the United States, which is basically what will happen. As you know, when a truckload of horses, if this bill passes, goes to the Mexican border and the driver says they're going over for pet food, they're going to go over and once they get over the border, there's no jurisdiction, there's right. no protection, right. and it's just not going to do anything. I don't even know if it will save a single horse. There's a lot of talk that we need humane euthanasia and humane caring of these horses so therefore we need to bring slaughter back to this country so that we can manage it. I think that's a very small minded outlook. It simply looks at the word and the issue of slaughter instead of looking at the big picture that these horses need protection. If they've been in the performance world like jumping and racing let's get the breeders to take care of the horses that have performed not only brought in the money and success but a whole lifestyle. If we're looking at the wild horses we wrote a bill of protection and we need to follow through with that promise it's not difficult it's not difficult we have solutions with PZP there's also talk that it's millions of acres that PZP is not possible that is not true either every section is fenced in we can easily access most of the horses the other thing is on tribal lands a lot of the tribes actually own them in family sections so these horses are not unaccounted for with a lot of the tribes because they're family owned and so while we could look at that as a breeding program let's look at a responsible breeding program program instead. So we combine sections of responsible breeding and then protection of the horses as well as the PZP, then we have the solutions right there. They, they are our national treasure. I'd like to end this by saying as currently drafted, the SAFE Act is a disposal bill masquerading yeah. as equine protection legislation. It is not. So we need to amend it, have it amended, and it just cannot, we cannot allow it to be passed as currently drafted. And um, I thank you, Anna, for taking well, the time to have you here and work with this mayor and changing her life and our lives. And I hope that um, all of your great work and all of your opinions, expert opinions, will help to affect our lawmakers in doing the right thing by America's wild and domestic and feral horses. Thank you so much. Thank you.